A little bit of a different backdrop today. I'm at my dad's house in the Isle of Man and I've come over to test loads of different products so this may be my backdrop for a few videos. First of all I took out the new 25mm 1.8 Maker lens. I'm getting better at pronouncing the brand name I think. I hope. Anyway, it's a fully manual focus lens as usual from this brand and I've reviewed a couple of the products before so I'll go over quickly all the things that they always do well and then I'll get into some of the specifics for this lens. It's incredibly well built as per usual with this brand, wonderful, wonderful quality stuff. It's all metal build quality and the focus ring at the front of the lens is really well designed, it has little notches in it. It reminds me of my old Minolta lenses actually, it's quite a nice little vintage throwback. And even though this lens is small, it does give you enough separation between the focus ring and the aperture ring so that you can use it by touch without looking at the lens for reference too often. Some of these lenses in the past, like the 28mm, has been very very close together and a little bit of a learning curve to get used to, but this one is much more separated and easy to use straight away. The aperture ring is no clicking. Is that how you'd say it? <laughs> Clickless? <laughs> it's a smooth aperture ring. So it's very, very good for video. There's no audio interference or any harsh stops when things change on the fly. And it's very, very nice and smooth to use in all circumstances. This lens is really, really good in harsh daylight. It doesn't really suffer from any unpleasant lens flares as some other lenses do. And I put this down to the front element of the glass being quite deeply embedded into the design of the body. And there is what I will very scientifically call ridges heading down to the glass, which I think might help diffract the light and, and break up any nasty flares. Whatever the reason, I'm gonna stop trying to like figure this out now. This lens is very good in harsh and challenging lighting conditions and that's a great step up from some of the lenses I've reviewed here in the past. I found this lens, like all of the lenses from this brand actually, to be super, super sharp, even wide open. I've yet to find any soft parts around the edges and I think it's a really really good quality piece of glass particularly for the price. With the 25mm focal length you can get really really good depth of field. I really like the bokeh on this lens and while it's not maybe the first focal length you'd think of for portraiture you can get some really good portraits out of it. I've enjoyed taking photographs of my friends and getting some sort of lifestyle candid shots during this little break and it's worked really well for both sort of travel, if you can call going 30 miles out to sea travel, I'm owning it. Uh, so it does travel very well, landscape very well and also sort of people. It's been a good all-rounder and I've not really had many moments where it's felt like the focal length or the lens has held me back. You can find focus quite quickly even though it is manual focus because of the way that the lens is designed and I haven't missed very many shots, if any, so far since using it, so that's really good. While it does have the great build quality of all of the other lenses that this manufacturer makes, it's also smaller and a little bit lighter than the rest as well which I think is only a plus point because sometimes with the Maker lenses they're built incredibly well but when they're on micro four thirds sometimes they can be a little bit heavy whereas this one fits the system very well it's not too big and it's not too heavy but you still don't sacrifice the build quality. An interesting choice with this lens is the aperture only goes down to f16, so it's 1.8 to f16. The benefit of this is it does all of these settings very very well. I think that's why we don't get much sort of chromatic aberrations and, and why it does work very very well. The downside of this really is if you're using video you probably will need a neutral density filter to rein in the shutter speed. 
because when I went out one of the days without a filter, I was ramping it right up to f16 and still my shutter speed was going sort of a thousandth of a second, so it made the video a little bit choppy. So if you're using it for video, definitely pack an ND filter or two. Forgot to add, I'm actually filming on it now, so this video as a whole is a great example of the video quality you can get from this lens. Anyway, as you were, carry on. If you're using it for stills, the aperture sort of range isn't an issue at all because your f16 will give you a great depth of field for any landscapes and then you have your low light and your shallow depth of field at the other end. So there's no negative, just keep an eye on it for video because your shutter speed can go woo, it can run away from you if you're not careful. So there are my thoughts in a nutshell. It's been a joy to use. I'm really, really getting on board with manual focus lenses. I find that when I'm using autofocus lenses now, I don't really know what to do with my hand because <laughs> I'm so used to just getting ready to, to change the focus ring as, as soon as I need to. I think if you're looking for a 25mm that is really good value for money that isn't going to break the bank, it's definitely under £100. I don't know the exact price on the top of my head and as always these things are subject to change so I'll, I'll stick a link below and you can have a look for yourself if you think it might be good for your setup. I don't know if I've actually mentioned it on this channel yet but I've made a microfornerds.com website which is a bit of a companion blog and I've got some photography up there and, and it's just a little bit of an additional way to get my thoughts out to you all. So when I put the review up for this lens, I will leave a link below and I'll put the edited photos so you can have a pixel peep and also the unedited photos as well so you can see what it looks like straight from camera. So there we go, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, as always, let me know and I shall get back to you in the comments section. And thank you for sticking around, it's been lovely to be here now, I've been here for like a year and it's so cool so thank you so much for coming back if you're a regular viewer and see you next time <laughs>